Hey, mamas, welcome back to Not Your Mother's Podcast. In this episode, we talk to Laura Is, a lifestyle blogger and mom of two. She's also the brainchild behind Naptime with Joey. She is amazing. Absolutely. It was a soulful, deep conversation around the joys of motherhood, the depth of motherhood, the journey of motherhood, the revelations that motherhood brings you, the fulfillment that it brings you, and just the celebration of the responsibility of being a mom. And that is definitely something that is not often said or spoken about. So we hope you enjoy the episode. We're not experts. We're moms just like you. We did the research, we read the books, we joined the clubs, and the more we learned about motherhood, the more we realized how many things aren't talked about publicly. This podcast is for you if you're looking for answers to match your experience, you ever feel frustrated with mom life and feel like you're doing it wrong, you're looking for your mama tribe that gets you, you feel misunderstood and overwhelmed with people's opinions, or maybe you just want a better understanding of what the heck is going on. The bottom line is you're not alone. We also know that there's so much information on the internet and it can be overwhelming when you're searching for answers. So we've sought some of the best experts in their field to give you actionable sound bites, insight and support that you can immediately implement into your life. We're here to do it together. Let's get dirty and real and raw. Let's talk about it all. My name is Sonnet and I'm Veronica and and welcome welcome to Not Your Mother's Mother's Podcast. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we have Laura Izumikawa, a blogger on motherhood and lifestyle and the brains behind Naptime with Joey, a book showcasing photographs she took of her oldest daughter dressed as different pop icons while napping. For the past decade, she worked as a photographer primarily in wedding and family portrait industry until an opportunity to work full-time through her social media platforms and website came up. Laura also has the most amazing husband, and together they have two beautiful daughters, Joey and Casey. Welcome to the show, Laura. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, we're so excited to talk to you today. Can you tell us a little bit more about your personal life and what led you to start this Nap Time with Joey project, which ultimately led to what you're doing today? Yeah, you know, like you said before with my bio, I worked as a photographer doing shoots like almost every day for about 10 years. And so by the time I had my kid and I was pregnant, I was kind of going through a creative rut, you know, not being able to go out and shoot as much as I wanted to. And so once Joey was born, obviously like motherhood just like rushed in and I was like constantly just staring at her, just like hovering over her. And so naturally I started taking photos of her in all kinds of different positions, but she slept like all the time. And at the time, my parents were going through a um, pretty rough time financially. They were just going through the hardest time and there weren't a lot of things that made them smile other than photos of my kid. And so I decided to start dressing her up in little things I found around the house just to take different types of photos and not just the same boring photo of her sleeping <laughs> like, <laughs> every day. And it ended up making them like come out of the shell and really laugh and just enjoy her. And so I just kept doing it. And a friend of mine said to start posting them online. And at the time, my Instagram, which I had, was only for my clients, you know, my potential wedding clients or people that are interested in lifestyle, landscape photography. And so to post pictures of my kid was like totally random. But I thought if it makes my parents laugh, it might make someone else laugh. And so I started posting them and it was literally just for fun. And somehow, like, I don't know, I can't remember now who, but some celebrity posted it and then another one did. And then I think Netflix posted one of my photos of her dressed up as Eleven from Stranger Things. Oh my God. (laughs) And then I think that was the point where it kind of took off. It's so weird to say it, but we did go viral suddenly we had like the whole world looking at pictures of my kid, you know, and it was like all over the news and all of that. And it was really alarming at first, you know, because, you know, it's just as a mom, like I kind of went into this like mama bear mode where I just wanted to like shut everything down and like not show everyone pictures of her. But the emails, the DMs, the comments that we got, like, hundreds of them every day in the beginning were all about how this is 
getting them out of like suicidal thoughts. It's getting them out of, yeah, a lot of them were dealing with like a political crisis in their countries and they had like people shooting guns in their backyard and it's like so dangerous. And a lot of them were like, wow. Um, yeah, my neighbor died. And for some reason, the video of your kid made me feel alive and hopeful for the future. And I was like, what? Like I'm here in like sunny California, not knowing a clue of what, you know, like everyone that they have. Yeah. And how these silly photos and videos that I didn't think much of are somehow triggering some sort of hope or happiness for them. I felt like I shouldn't stop or at least just continue doing that just for them at least. And it was always a dream of mine to always just connect and travel so I can, you know, meet as many people as I can in this lifetime and really experience different cultures and and contribute and be (laughs) a decent human being to them. And I think this was such a like answered prayer for me. Yeah. And and to be able to use this platform for good and to share our unique parenting journey. And being sort of raw and real with it, I think it's it's been an honor really for me to do that. Oh my gosh. I have an 11th month old now. And before I had her or was pregnant, I had seen the photos of Joey and they were amazing. And it was just, it was always so nice to see, you know, and it does like if you are feeling a little down in the dumps and you just see this like a baby sleeping that's like dressed up as someone, it's like hilarious. And you're just like, oh, that's so heartfelt. But then when I became a mom, I'm like, oh my God, how does that baby sleep? Yeah. <laughs> and, like, stay, <laughs> and stay asleep. <laughs> totally. <laughs> because totally. like, if I like, if I twitch like my pinky toe, my daughter wakes up if I'm sitting next to her, <laughs> you know? So like, and then I thought like, oh, you know, I thought maybe like moms would see it like in awe that you have a sleeping child that can let you do this. But to to go into this like, you know, this sign of hope for people all over the world is just like, my heart just is so, is feeling all the feels right now. It's, it's I can't insane. believe it. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And that it started with your parents. So you saw a need and you created something so close to your heart for your family and how the whole world needed that too. And that your platform as a creative, it's really allowed you to connect and to bloom as a creative in ways that, you know, we all hope happen, but it came to you because you really just were doing what you saw needed to be done. It's just such a beautiful story. Yeah. We're in disbelief still. I think every day my husband and I were always, always floored by the amount of kindness we've received from our followers or when we go somewhere to the market and we run into someone that has followed us, we're so humbled and like grateful that we can have this experience in this short life of ours to connect through social media this way. And I know a lot of people think social media is a bad idea, you know, because you don't know what's real, what's authentic out there. But we're just so grateful that we're able to be part of that in a positive way. Because I know when I was a mom before all of this happened, honestly, social media was where I went for inspiration and and guidance on how to parent and how to get through motherhood. And so to be able to possibly do that for someone else, or at least, you know, like connect with someone who's going through the same thing. I think that's like, it's such an honor for us. And we're really, really humbled and grateful, even just to be asked to be on this podcast of yours. Well, we are we are really honored to have you and to be able to share your story and to get to know you. Like it's such an honor for us. And so to dive in a little bit deeper, part of this podcast is to share your journey and to talk about some of the things that aren't being talked about when it comes to motherhood and how that pertains to your personal journey. So if you could kind of put words to what the unsaid or the unspoken part of motherhood is in your journey to share with our audience, what would you say that that is? I think there are a lot of things that are unsaid in motherhood. Motherhood for me has been life-changing in the way that I never wanted to have kids actually, because I thought it would just disrupt my life. And I wanted to do a million things before I die. You know, my bucket list, you know, was always there, but I didn't realize that motherhood could fulfill all of those needs for me. And you know, like you said earlier, you know, there's a lot of like mom quotes out there that are like about how terrible it is. 
how you get no sleep and how, which is, it's all true, right? But to me, it didn't resonate as much as the joys of motherhood that I experienced, how life blossomed after having my first child, how differently I saw the world, how colors were brighter, how textures were more deeper, how time just felt so real and important. And my priorities completely shifted. And it was like I became a new person. It's not that I didn't have an identity before. I think it just, at least for me, it completed me. I think I was always looking for a way to be filled, you know, before having kids, whether it's material stuff or I don't know, traveling or whatever, my bucket list, right? But I think for me, the unsaid of motherhood was how beautiful and extraordinary this gift is to be this person who can influence a child's life and to raise this person to become a a wonderful, decent, contributing human being in this world. And to have that kind of power and influence and love that continues to grow, I think that's such a overlooked thing. I think a lot of mothers do feel that and they don't know how to talk about it or say it enough. I think I don't know if it is the same in other cultures around the world, but at least in the Western culture, I feel like there's a lot of that, like hashtag mom fail, hashtag dad fail, hashtag that kind of stuff. Like we don't celebrate enough. Exactly. I have chills all over my body. I really hear what you're saying and feel like you're just like sparking thoughts in my mind around this all. But yeah, like I was saying before we started the interview that I was looking online for like a fun mom quote. And they're all, there's a lot of complaining, sarcastic kind of mom quotes out there, but this joy and celebration and how it fulfills you on such a deep level isn't really talked about enough and isn't explored or given permission to feel that. And it made me think about how, you know, they say, oh, mom, life completes you, but it's because you you get to complete yourself too through their eyes. Like you become the best version of yourself while you're doing it. And that is such a deep experience that you don't know how to put words to until you become a mom. So thank you for sharing that and bringing words to that. Yeah. What's amazing about it most of all is how it changes every day too. Like you think you know, you think you know because <laughs> yeah. of yesterday, but oh no, today's a whole different adventure. And it's just the way you want to see it and treat the day really sets you up for the next day. And I I really, yeah, feel like my kids have raised me. So if there is like a mom who wants to get to this point where they're feeling like they're becoming a better person, but they still feel like their initial thought process is to think about something negative that's happening, you know, like, is there any advice that you can offer them? Yeah. I mean, it's totally normal, right? I mean, there's no mother, father, parent out there raising kids who aren't wanting to pull their hair out at moments, right? It's okay to accept that it's going to be hard, but that it's worth it, you know? And it's hard to say it to someone because it just sounds kind of callous, right? But when you're in it and you're fully engaged with your child and, and, and you see the good and the bad, almost always the good overwhelms everything else. And I think it is about perspective and how to be right with yourself, how to self-care and be healthy in order to be able to pour into your children's lives. I think that was a major thing that I learned once I became a first-time parent. It was all about just Joey. It was just all about my kid. And I ignored my marriage. I ignored myself. And I realized that is what crippled me and it made me feel like less engaged and less available to my, to my child because I wasn't taking care of myself. And so to recognize that it's hard, to recognize that, yeah, there are some dark nights with parenting is totally fine because then it'll kind of propel you back on track. It's like creating a baseline of like where you are, get honest with yourself and then you could work from there. Exactly. Just to be real honest with yourself, like, okay, I'm having a really bad time right now, but it's okay. And there's hope. And 
for me, I always thought, okay, this is just a phase. Like my kid's not sleeping. It's just a phase. She's going to end up sleeping, you know, or, you know, she's not, she's being super picky. Like how am I supposed to feed her? But it's just a phase and it's okay. So I think I just had continual like optimistic outlook that really helped me. And I had to force it. It was kind of like fake it till you make it kind of a, a, a philosophy I had in terms of like trying to pump myself up to continue on. Yeah, I just, I feel like those are such powerful things to say. How did you make those shifts to start taking better care of yourself or, or just like start, you know, checking in with yourself? I think the biggest lesson I learned was to ask for help. And self-care doesn't always come in the form of, you know, getting manicures and pedicures and, you know, that kind of stuff, which is great too. And I love those things. But I think it also comes in the form of finding help, asking for help. For me, it was hard for me to accept help because I didn't want to burden anyone. You know, like they have kids, like why would they want to babysit mine? And so I didn't do that. And I think that's what made me not work on myself and my needs as a woman, as a wife, as a creative. I wasn't fueling myself in it like the residual effects of that came into parenting and it became too overwhelming. But once I started asking for help and accepting help, that was when I could go out and do a little retail shopping for myself or, you know, go get a cup of coffee or, you know, do something that you normally couldn't with like a newborn, you know, just allowing time and space for myself. That was my form of self-care because for me, it just, I wanted to be able to have the luxury to do anything you know, like just sit and watch a Netflix movie, you know, for like three hours straight or something. How yeah. can you do that? With the yeah. Constantly <laughs> needing your attention. And so to be able to just drop off Joey at a friend's house just for a couple hours, just so I can refuel for like the simplest thing, you know, that helped me so, so much. And I was able to come back to her and fully engage with her um, the way that she deserved. So yeah, that was my way of self-care. That makes so much sense. I mean, I, I, people say that, but then it's so hard to actually do it. It's hard to be like, okay, I'm going to get dressed and I'm going to take my child and I'm going to drop her off at a friend's house. And then I'm going to like commit to taking some time for myself rather than just this fractured, let me try to do it all and like really not be present for any of it because I, I haven't like taken that time to just realign myself. So it's such a great reminder. This next section of our questions is a part where we just want to know, I guess, a little bit more about how you've navigated your life as a mom to help highlight some of that for our audience. We've we've talked a lot about that actually in this in these previous questions, but even more so, what is one of the hardest decisions you had to make as a mom and how did you work through that? I think the hardest decision I had to make as a mom <laughs> surprisingly was relying on my husband you know, fully trusting him <laughs> with my child, with our child. <laughs> Let me say that again, with our child. <laughs> We're all laughing because we all yeah. relate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, don't you know it. Um, but I think it's like, I realize a lot of mothers struggle with this, you know, and you know, we carried our children, you know, or, you know, we've, we're the emotional ones that are super tied to our children before they're even born. Or, you know, if we're adopting them, like, I think we're just more inclined as mothers to nurture and, you know, parent. And I think it's unfair, <laughs> I realized, to put that expectation on men, you know, and particularly for my husband, you know, he wanted to be that parent. He couldn't, like, catch up to me, I think. And instead of me finding grace to give him in the beginning, it was a lot of like, how do you not know this? Or like, how come you didn't read up on this? <laughs> or how come that dad is awesome at doing this? And how come you can't do it? It was just a lot of like, I didn't understand, you know, and being frustrated. And ultimately it made him feel like insignificant, you know? And the hardest thing for me to do was to really trust him and be okay with his mistakes and be okay because I'm giving myself that room to grow and make mistakes too. Why not him? And, you know, there, there'd be moments where he would like really like, really like you don't know how to put a diaper on, you know, like moments like that. 
I'm like, you know what? It's okay because he'll have to go through this so he can learn, you know? And, and I can't like literally tell him what to do because one, I don't want to degrade him. I don't want to make him feel like he doesn't know anything. There's a beauty in seeing your partner become a parent, you know? There's beauty in allowing them to have that time and space to find their strengths, you know, as a parent. And for me, it's letting go of that and giving him that control and giving him that space and time really just like benefited me and like blessed me more because I just fell in love with him even more so seeing him being the father that he was destined to be for our kids. I found him sexier. I found him more attractive. I found him so capable and more trusting of him. And then it became more like partners, you know, as opposed to just me being the single mom or whatever that doing everything yourself. Yeah. It it was like this beautiful partnership and we were stronger parents because of that. Amen to that. I I totally relate to that. I anytime my husband comes home and I just see how Cecilia's our daughter, um, how she she like squeals and then hugs him and they both kind of like sway and hug each other for like five minutes. Like every oh. every night I cry because I just oh I find gosh. it like the most sexiest thing to see yes. how hard he, you know, he it's hard for him. It's hard for him to be gone all day and then come home and sometimes she's sleeping and he can't see her and he's doing his part in our partnership. And so I just find it so attractive when now that he's a dad and I always felt like that was going to be like the best role he's ever played. But it was, you know, there was that learning curve of just being not so demanding or the expectations of having them be moms, but it's that's our role, you know, like all the things that we do, that position has been filled, <laughs> you know, like yeah, <laughs> exactly. Find <laughs> your own position, but you know, it's, it's but a, we have to give them space to find that position and and, and totally I, I agree with that. I think for us, it, you know, it, because it, we're new moms and it's a new role that we're playing, I think a lot of it was probably fear-based too because you're doing something on your own and you're just like, I don't really know what I'm doing and I wish you didn't know what you were doing with me, you know? And so, but yeah, when ultimately giving them that space into for them to blossom into who they are is very beautiful and very sexy. Yes. <laughs> Good for everybody. I hope they're hearing this. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Oh, I'm talking to you, baby. <laughs> yeah, and I just want to make sure that my husband knows I agree with all of this. <laughs> You're like, me three. (laughs) In one to two sentences, what do you want us to take away from this hard decision that you had to make? I think in order to become that parent that you want to be, that in your mind is totally engaging and loving and healthy, I think it's to trust your partner, trust your spouse, and learn to let go of control because control isn't always the best thing with parenting. It's a lot of letting go and letting things happen organically and falling in love with that process. And I think a lot of that has to do with choosing to trust in your partner, trusting in your husband, and then also taking the time to recognize how far they've come in this journey as a parent and really falling in love with that person again in a different way. And that adds to the formula of being a good parent, you know? To be able to love and trust your spouse, it totally bleeds into the way you look at your kids and the way your kids will see how you treat your spouse. Yeah, you set the standard of what they should get, what they should expect from a relationship. Yeah, I love that. And how you said earlier, just the strength in your relationship, like it, it is the formula for being better parents and having a strong, beautiful partnership that you can be the parents and the relationship that you want to be by letting go a little bit rather than being like, we will be this, are like allowing space to be that. What is one of the biggest aha moments you've had in parenting? I think the one that sticks out to me the most is like, oh my gosh, everything I'm doing and saying, like she's picking up on. I realized like she's not just some mute kid, you know, yeah. she's, you know, she may not be talking to me, but she's listening to me. She's, you know, understanding what I'm doing, everything that she's seeing through her eyes at a young age, like all the shapes and colors of how I'm 
interacting with her and how I'm talking to my husband and how I'm reacting to situations, you know, she's absorbing all of that. And I think that came on early on when she was very little. Whenever I say that she raised me, you know, like, and not the other way around, it, it was because of this reason. I feel like she made me become a better person because I realized, oh man, like I need to get it together. You know, I can't just like, yeah, she's paying attention and ultimately she's going to reference me, you know, right? Like when she's older, like, oh, this is what my mother did. Or like, I remember when my mom would react this way to the, these certain situations. And yeah, I don't want to, you know, traumatize yeah. my kid. <laughs> yeah. You know? and, yeah. And I just, I that was an aha moment for me that like, oh man, like she is so much smarter than I yeah. realize. And she's picking up on so much at such a crazy speed. And I need to like check myself, you know? And yeah, I think that somehow, yeah, became like sort of the precursor of changing my life. It changed the way I treated myself, the way I eat, the way I sleep, the way I take care of myself. Yeah, just so I can be that healthy influence in her life. And a lot of it didn't have to do with what I tell her to do. Like, it was more about the quiet things, the, the invisible things that uh, she would pick up on, you know, like the way I smile at her, the way I smile at my husband, the way I laugh, you know, things that you can't really teach a kid. It's just exuding love through that. I think that was a huge aha moment for me. Yeah, this aha moment, like the takeaway that I'm getting from it, it reminds me of what one of our previous podcast interviews, Heather Chauvin said, she said, uh, the more you heal now, the less your children have to heal as adults. When I heard that, I'm like, oh my God, that's so true. So that was like kind of my takeaway of what you're saying. But in one or two sentences, what do you want us to take away from your aha moment? You realize you're more of a powerful influence, just being with your child, loving on them, caring for them in ways that you can't really teach in books or seminars or blogs. The way your love language is to your child is so unique. And as long as you're available to show that constantly, your child will be fine and will learn to be such a wonderful human being because he or she is learning all of that from you, how to be real and genuine and how to love and care for someone. is just, it's, it's shown in the way you touch, it's shown in the way you look at her or him. That's a very powerful tool in parenting. It's not all about toys and music and and white noise and, and rocking the baby back and forth. It, it could be as powerful as kissing and, and really laughing and, and looking into your child's eyes for a long period of time and soaking it all in. There's so much to be said about the simple things like that that are just so powerful. Yeah. I just feel like this whole episode and everything you've shared is so inspiring, you know, to really just get back to what's at the foundation and fundamentally what's happening to us as parents and how to love and show up for our partner and for our children. And so thank you for really going deep into that for us. What is something that you are really excited about right now in your life? At the moment, I'm really excited about seeing my youngest daughter go through the same favorite milestones that my first daughter went through. I'm really excited to see her, you know, start to crawl and, and start to interact with my husband and my daughter more and just sort of like repeat everything that I already miss about my first daughter. So to be able to to witness that again, I'm really excited to see that. Oh, okay. So this next round is called Mama Has a Minute. It's meant to be short and sweet, kind of like Jeopardy. Are you ready to go? Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> okay. What's your favorite form of self-care? Full body massage. <laughs> and I emphasize full body because, oh my gosh, I can't explain to you. Once you get started on my shoulders, I start to think about, oh my gosh, my lower back. And then, oh my gosh, my calves. And oh my gosh, my feet. So full body massage. What is the best parenting advice you've ever received? Trust your gut instinct. Share your favorite parenting hack. I'd have to say the iPad for now. What is one product your children cannot live without? Right now, the Hatch Baby. It's a white noise machine. Recommend one book and share why. Oh my gosh. I think I have to skip this one because I haven't read a book in like years. 
honest, to be honest. <laughs> Well, I'll recommend nap time with Joey. Okay. I haven't, I don't have it yet, but I am for sure going to get it. <laughs> I can send it to you. Nap time with Joey. Sure. I've read pieces of books, so I can't say that I've read a whole book in a while. Um, but yeah, sure. Nap time with Joey would be great. Awesome. And finally, share some mama to mama words of wisdom and the best way that we can connect with you. Trust your instinct when people are sharing unsolicited advice, which you will always get. Take it as a blessing. Be thankful for them for caring, but also trust your instinct because you were designed and made for this. And there's a lot to be said when you allow yourself to be the mother that you're destined to become and uh, grow into, to leave room for yourself to grow and, and leave grace for yourself as well. That's so important and it's better for your children and your marriage and all your relationships to be proud of who you are as a mother at this point and the mother you will become tomorrow and the next day and and years after that. Yeah, to allow yourself for that growth. The way you can connect with me, I am on social media. I am on Instagram at Laura is. I'm on Facebook at Laura is Choi, C-H-O-I. That's my married last name. Yeah, or my website, lauraiz.com. Well, thank you so much. This has been a very inspiring interview and I'm so happy that you had the time to do this. Yeah, thank you. With the three-month-old and just being so open and vulnerable and sharing from the heart. And I know that we gained so much from it and we know our listeners are grateful as well. Oh man, I'm I'm really honored. I'm really am. And I'm so glad you reached out to us. And yeah, I'd love to connect with you again in the future. So thank you. Oh, oh my gosh. That interview was like soul gratifying. And soul binding. Yeah. I felt like she was just like, I loved how she really took the time to share the most soulful, I keep using that word, but just truest reply. I know. I feel like having a conversation with her was kind of like after you have like go into like a deep meditation and then you go into a discussion about what you think about. You know, it's like when you meditate and you start thinking like, wow, I'm really grateful for this opportunity to be a mom and, and you know, the responsibility that you have of raising a, a decent citizen of the world. And it's just like, that's what the conversation was about. You know, it's just that those like insightful moments that you get after like deep meditation. And yeah, it was incredible. I felt like she just shared so deeply in so many different directions from her marriage to her children. Like we didn't even get into how she creates the photographs. Like how does she get all those props? We just cut right down to the core of her journey and it blew my mind and gave me chills and made me want to cry. So yeah, so we're going to, her show notes will can be found at notyourmotherspodcast.co. Type in Laura is I-Z in the search bar and links to her Instagram and her website will be there. And yeah, and her amazing book that I hope she sends us. <laughs> <laughs> I too. want it. I want it so <laughs> I bad. Like, yes, please send it. I know. Yeah. So yeah, so we'll uh, chat next time. See you later. If you love our podcast, please subscribe and leave a review. You don't know how much a review helps us and helps mamas just like you find our podcast. 